Yo, Jay. <laughs> Wait. What? Hey, everybody. It's your favorite show, Yo, Yo Jay. Jay, where I A your Q. Gross. Um, this week, we have some fantastic questions coming from the Twitter universe. We have Yo, Yo Jay, Jay from Chad Gibb. 416. I believe that's your area code, Chad, from Toronto, Ontario, everybody. Chad Gibb. Hey, OJ. Are these are there exercises to strengthen or engage my glutes? Uh, I've been told I need to learn these patterns. Unfortunately, Chad, there haven't been any exercises proven to actually strengthen or activate the glutes. <laughs> So until science comes up with some kind of, uh, I don't know, algorithm or some kind of, some, we need some science behind this. And unfortunately, I mean, we can, we can have cell phones that uh, will periscope live. You're, you, we can talk to people across the earth in instantaneous science. That's science. But they still have not been able to figure out an exercise that will strengthen your glutes or activate them. Unfortunately. Next question, everybody. Um, come on, Chad. Come on. Who you talking to, huh? You talking to the glass man here. Chad, you don't... Chad, is this like, is this a sarcastic question? Come on. Is there anything to strengthen your glutes? I'll give you the real rundown. I'll give you the full wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Very good. And this is coming off... Hey, guys, I just had my wisdom teeth out. I just had my wisdom teeth out like two days ago. I, I had it numbed. I wasn't put under. I, I tough guided. I tough guided a little bit. But now I'm like, I can't even work out. The dentist said, he said, oh, you know what, three days after, your, uh, after you've had your operation, I still don't want you with a single hand lifting anything over five pounds. You try going to the bathroom sitting down for three days. Anyways, back to the glutes. If you guys want to talk about glute activation, the very first thing you want to do is get off your glutes. I know that sounds crazy, but to activate the glutes properly, we have to actually get you laying down on your back or on your front. So there's no load, there's no weight, there's no load on your actual glutes themselves. You can squeeze the glutes, you can relax the glutes, squeeze the glutes, relax the glutes. This is a good time to connect the dots. You're connecting your brain through the nervous system into those muscles. If you have trouble doing that, there's no reason to go any further. There's to stay at that level where you're just trying to Oh, uh, we call them deer in the headlights, where it's kind of like, ah, uh, am I squeezing them? Am I not? Yeah. Oh, a bit of hamstring there. Once you have that, you can go through some what we call high threshold exercises, where you're actually starting to move the hips. The hip joint is actually moving, maybe with a little bit of load, like your own body weight. That's enough load for you. Just by moving up and down, you're going to be able to get some more activation, and you might start to get a little bit of strengthening. But I always say, if getting up and down, just moving your hips with your own body weight is exercise, you need to get out more, Chad. Come on, baby. You're a golfer. You get, you get, you get lots of activity. That's not going to do it for you unless you have some kind of interruption between what's going on in your brain and what's going on with your glutes. So the next thing we want to do is this. Get you into maybe a quadruped position. Start moving the hip joint, extending the hip. I also love it when you stand against a wall and you push your hip back against the wall and you do these glute activations where you just, you're just like isometric, push your heel against the wall and then that activates the glute and it makes sure that your glutes are actually firing properly. So we're not actually moving, we're just pushing against the wall and getting that sensation like, ooh, these feel strong, these feel tight. I don't want you to squeeze those glutes like you're in prison, Chad. You want to feel like you got a piece of coal and you're trying to turn it into a diamond. Or if you want a different analogy, you could have a peanut and you're trying to turn it into peanut butter. Hello. That's disgusting. I know oh, it is. No. Um, so that's what I would do. I would start there. There's so many higher level ones and we have tons of examples on that on our next level website. But really guys, it's all about just getting activation in the glutes. Strengthening the glutes is easy. We got squats, we got deadlifts, we got lunges, all the classic leg exercises. Guess where the legs attach to your body, Chad? through the pelvis, through the glutes. So any kind of leg exercises, squatting, lunging, deadlifts, all those are gonna be fantastic. So if you want more information about that, look up any glute exercise on the web. Once you have them activated properly, you will be able to use any of those exercises built to strengthen and activate your glutes. Thanks for playing along, Chad, and uh, send us another yo and we'll answer it 
right away. Um, the next one comes from a longtime friend and uh, colleague, Robbie Cannon in Ireland. Now, Robbie Cannon is a very extinct, uh, distinguished strength coach in his own right, but what he said was this, Jay. Jay, I want some information on what you think about unstable surface training. Now, unstable surface training is this. Remember back in the day when functional training was really cool? we get on Swiss balls and everything was like on unstable surfaces. And then they came up with this great thing. Somebody invented, what if we took a ball and cut it in half and then put a platform on the bottom? It's called a BOSU ball. What if we were able to do that? How cool would that be? We could stand on it, we could flip it over and you know stand on each side of it. All of a sudden, exercises start to explode. There's people like spinning a plate on their finger while this arm's doing shoulder presses and the other one's standing on the Swiss ball. It became outrageous how many different variations you could make on unstable surfaces. My biggest pet peeve is this. Any kind of website that I see where someone's doing something powerful, like let's say a golf swing, and they're kneeling on the ball and they're taking a golf swing, like that's just so ridiculous, guys. Uh, what I want to do is this. Unstable surfaces are fantastic for proprioception or enhancing your balance. But what I don't want you using them for is strength training and I don't want you using them for power training. So get off the BOSU ball, get off the Swiss ball, and if you want to load and explode, put your feet on the ground, put energy into the ground, load and explode. That's how I feel about unstable surface training, and we can go more into depth with that and why you do it. I just want you to think before you jump on one of those fun apparatus that makes you feel unstable, like a balance board, just ask yourself, what are we training today? If it's balance and proprioception, you're good to go. If it's anything other than that, put your feet on the ground, put energy into the ground, and push. All right, everybody. I hope that answers your questions on YoJ. If you want to send me a YoJ, you can connect with us at coachglass at jasonglasslab.com. Coachglass at jasonglasslab.com. Or you can simply send us a Twitter, Instagram, uh, what else we got? Instagram, Twitter, Periscope. Man, anything that has an ad at the front, just add Jason Glass Lab at the end and you got it. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube to make sure that you're not missing any of these episodes. And be sure, be sure to include hashtag YoJ whenever you're sending us an email, text, or a Twitter, and we'll be sure to answer your questions. Until next time, everybody, have a fantastic week and Yo, Jay. Jay. I never Wait, know how to what? finish those. I never know how to finish. We've lost everybody. All right. Look who's only. Look who's only. Yo, Jay. Look who's only. Yo, Jay. Look who's only. Yo, Jay. Look who's only. Yo, Jay.